uh, what are we talking about today? Um, horse tails. Horse tails. Equisetum, Telmedia, the giant horsetail, um, the strobilus, the part that produces the spores. So this pops out of the ground first, mm -hmm. and then as in maybe like between mid-March and mid-April, and then right about now, so we're on the 18th of April, you're starting to see the vegetative part pop out of the ground. And so you'll see that in some of the videos, that's the very green part with the bracts that are like much greener and sticking out in every direction and kind of look like a horsetail, hence the name. They're really cool looking. We've really just eaten these as like trail snacks. We've never really brought them home and like tried to cook them up before. And so this is going to be uh, an experience. Yeah, indigenous people all over the coast um, from... It was like one of their main vegetables in the springtime I read, so... Yeah, so lots of indigenous use. Shout out to Elise. Uh, Elise... Elise is one of her books. Um, Wild Rose in the Western Red Cedar, phenomenal read. Um, you should buy it. She talks a little bit about the indigenous use in here. Also a great, great write-up uh, on Arcadian Abe's blog, uh, which is like, we're gonna link it in the description. So he had a great write-up about how to distinguish the giant horsetail from the common horsetail, um, and a whole bunch of just kind of in-depth information about the horsetails. Lots of references about what different indigenous groups used it for what. Yeah. So check that out. It's a good resource. A couple things just to point out. Um, you When you're picking them, you we've been taste testing them in the field, and so you want to get them when the heads are definitely still green. So because we're on the tail end of the season, which is like mid-April, um, we had a hard time finding the green ones, but you definitely are looking for ones that kind of are in this configuration this is even on the tail end of what would be considered edible but you can notice that this the part that produces the spores is still green it's a little bit shorter and squatter the more brown that they get and you can definitely see how this one is getting more brown the browner they get the stringier and just more tough and more tough and uh there's like a aftertaste at the very end a bitter aftertaste and so um in picking them today Really, the, the ones we were looking for are going to be the ones that are short with the green. And then ultimately, what we're going to do to prepare these, um, to get them ready just to eat, is you want to take these papery bracts off. So interestingly, this plant has a ton of silica. Like I was reading that it has, has perhaps the most silica of any plant. And that's an anti-herbivory adaptation. <laughs> we had a long talk about what anti-herbivory was. And so um, if you're a plant, it's not good to get eaten. And so you like to come up with ways to prevent not to not get eaten. <laughs> and so one of the ways this plant did that was to have lots and lots of silica in these bracts. These bracts and then other members of the Equisetum or the Equisetaceae family can be used as sandpaper and was used as sandpaper um, or scouring rush for like scouring pots and pans and so almost like sandpaper because of that silica that's inside and so you don't want to eat this stuff it can actually wear down your teeth can't imagine any, you'd like really eat enough of it probably would like taste pretty gnarly um just peel it off it's or gross. peel it off so you the to prepare these we're just gonna like literally just peel this stuff off and then it's like celery kind yeah. of and then it's almost like celery. What you're eating is like the balance oh, of the plant from there. Tell them, so there's also water in the shoots and you can drink. Should so, we try it? Yeah, so and anywhere, so you know, you want to always purify your water when you're out um, hiking or whatever. You don't just drink water anywhere. Well, this, you can actually break them apart. There's water in the shoots and it's safe to drink, which really you... <laughs> <laughs> don't really some places we've got lots and sometimes it depends I think where it's located yeah see that's a good one and it tastes good it tastes good it's fresh the, the kids love it it's fun it's kind of a fun thing to do it is should we try it again yeah <laughs> do it yes <laughs> that is so 
such a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta try it. get it in your mouth, but <laughs> so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna cook these up. We're gonna eat some raw. Uh, we've been eating them raw all day. We're gonna the, we've been reading that some of the traditional ways that these were actually eaten, where they were peeled and then dipped in bear fat. We don't have any bear fat. We have goose. So we have some goose fat from um, a goose that my son Caden and I got this year, harvested. And, and so, bacon grease. And we've got some bacon grease because who doesn't have bacon grease? Yeah. And then are we going to prepare any other way? I was thinking we would try to maybe just like saute it like celery in a pan with some butter. Just see how it is. Yeah. I mean, what's going to go wrong? Yeah. Uh, we couldn't find any other kind of traditional recipes or other ways people eat it. There was some reports that indigenous folks would actually dig up the roots um, and then utilize those uh, but we didn't dig any roots, so that's gonna be, have to be a further video for that matter. I didn't even know that. I didn't even look to see what a root looked like from those. Yeah, me neither. So, <laughs> hello. We're always, back. <laughs> always properly identify your plants before eating them. Oh. Forgot to mention that. Uh, so, in this area, there's not a whole lot that's gonna look anything like this, other oh. than perhaps another horsetail. Uh, there is Equisetum arvens, which is the common horsetail. It's going to be smaller, um, and it's got many more uh, bracts, many more of like leaf, leafy things, and they're kind of a kink. Um, are they edible? They are. The yeah, other ones? Yeah, they are. Like edible. they're not going to hurt they're you. They're not going to hurt you. So I don't, I'm not aware of any of the horsetails that are going to hurt you. Um, and realistically, I think you'd have a hard time misidentifying these just based on size. And the look, they're very. So as far as like safety is concerned, with like things to forage, pretty safe. You'd have a hard time messing this one up, and I'm good at messing stuff up. But you probably should still <laughs> still be identify safe. it. Oh, get your book that you should use. Your po jar and McKinnon. Like really show them because that book is super easy to use. Throw himself down. He find no strength to get off this ground. By the wave of the horse tail. By the wave of the horse tail. He wishes no height, no height in your mind. To climb the steep hill, none he can find. If you think you can see it in your hand. What celery would taste like if you sauteed it with butter and salt, except no celery flavor. Yeah. Not bad. It's not bad. I'd eat it again. Stir it around. You just dip it. Is it good? It's good, yeah. I want it. You need a lot of bacon fat on there. I almost feel like it would be better if you somehow it's filled it with bacon bitter. fat. Yes, that one's way better. Mm -hmm. It's good, right? It doesn't have that bitter. Oh, yeah. It was really bitter. It's a very like weird flavor. I don't think the goose fat is good. Hard pass on the goose fat. Old goose fat. <laughs> <laughs> now let's try this. This is the one I'm really I'm curious about. I'm serious about. about um, don't oh, wait, 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 wait! But you gotta add salt and stuff. Yeah, what about salt? butter and like salt? Dude, straight bacon grease. Uh-uh. Oh, Reeve may only eat. Ready? Eat this one right here. Do you like it? Going back for seconds. Mmm. Yummy? Is it good? How 
was it? Good. I like it as I'm in the trail eating it, but I don't think I would personally be picking a whole bunch of it and dipping it in fat and eating it. Yeah, I'm pretty much on mom's boat on that one. Judah loved it. Judah, how was it? <laughs> so I personally thought it was, I thought the raw and the fat was really good. I actually went back and had like fourths and fifths. It is very, very dependent on the piece you get. So there were some pieces where I was like, ooh, that's gross. And then there was other pieces that I was like, oh, that's really, really good. So I think you got to pick it at the perfect stage or it won't be good. Sautéed, it was all right. So eating the parts where the spores are no bueno. It looked really good. It looked like it would be delicious. It leaves like corn on the cup. Like corn on the cup. But it leaves the spores in your mouth so and like, makes them dry. Yeah, as soon as you take a bite, it's like mushy, dry. And then it stays in your mouth. <laughs> something. And it is not good. So, would you eat it again? Yes, from Dad. Yes, from Judah. Yes, from Silas. Thumbs sideways for Mom. It's maybe for me. A maybe so, for Kaden. Yep. Oh, yeah.